Smart money. Our topic today is early retirement, but more on the lines of uh, is early retirement as glamorous as it sounds? Uh, we have Karan Datta who is with us. He's the, he used to be the chief business officer of Axis Mutual Fund. He has had a long two decadal journey in the financial industry, in the mutual fund industry. And five years back at the age of 48, Karan retired. So we are trying to understand from him how retirement, the life after retirement actually is. Uh, so Karan, I'll come to that in a bit, right? The sure. softer aspects of it. But before the break, you also told us about how you have a 15 crore corpus, right. X of your assets like That's your house, etc. So now you are sorted with your retirement journey. But right. tell me, what are the two or three ways to look at withdrawals post retirement and determine a good what a good withdrawal amount should be? Yeah. Like what would our monthly expenses be right. and how to structure your investments that way? Uh, again, I think Sonia, that's a very important question. Um, and you know, funnily enough, a lot of people don't think about this very hard. They just leave it as if it's something they don't want to speak about or put some thought behind it. Uh, and I'm glad you asked this question. There are three ways to look at a good amount. The starting point is monthly expenses. And uh, so there are two or three ways uh, I kind of, you know, whenever I speak to friends, I tell them how to look at uh, the corpus. So the number one thing is 25 to 30 times of your annual expenditure should be the corpus. So if someone's kind of got a monthly expense of, let's say, one, one lakh. lakh, then it's 12 lakhs, then 25 times or 12 lakhs roughly is 25 to 30 times is the right corpus to retire at. Okay. And if that is, if that indicator is done, another way to look at it is whatever is the corpus, whatever, you can kind of withdraw f anything between four and four to five percent annually. Mm for about a 25 year period, the provision is if invested well. Okay. So whatever the corpus, if it's a five crore corpus, you can safely withdraw anything between four to five percent annually and meet your expenses. So this 25 times you said would be your uh, monthly income, um, annually. Uh, uh, no, so, so you, suppose that, my should monthly income, that should be the corpus. That should exactly. be the corpus, exactly. So if my uh, monthly income is one lakh, then, monthly expense. Uh, sorry, monthly expense is 1 lakh. Right. And then so my yearly expense is about 12, 13 lakhs, whatever. Let's say 10 lakhs. Yeah. Then 10 into 25 or 30 times uh, should be the corpus. Okay. But are you taking into consideration inflation? Yes. Yeah, so this, this takes into the 30 times, mm. takes into consideration automatically inflation and the way the expenses will go up. Okay. That is why it is a multiple of 30 times. But that corpus is only for monthly expenses. It's not for large expenses like children's education, marriage, etc. So, so, Sonia, that's where sitting down and putting down goals becomes supremely critical. For example, it could very well be buying a home mm. or for that matter, children's education and then finally planning for retirement. And so when I say expenses, the concept of expenses should include all of these that you just mentioned, plus let's say education. Okay. So it will inflate, like 10 may not become 10, it may become 15, because you've actually, you know, said that my child's education could cost 50 lakhs. So you've got to then plan, plan back and see what it means on an annual basis. Okay, now, so money is one thing, right? The other thing is time. And I want to know from you, since you've been retired five years, what are you doing with your time? And has it been hard for you to make that journey out of the corporate world and into a world where you pretty much have time for everything? Um, so, so here's the thing. And someone asked me, very interestingly, someone asked me this question as to what is the most expensive thing I've ever bought? And I suddenly realized, and very intuitively, I just answered the most expensive thing I've ever bought in my life is time. Because you're actually, I've given up a salary and a bonus and stock options. So with that opportunity loss, I bought time. And so it's very, very important that as an individual, I respect my time and know what to do with it. Mm. And remember, Sonia, that this is not a journey which only I'm going to do. All my friends and everyone watching at some stage will hit 60. Yeah. They need to know what to do with their time because it's still another 25 years journey, yeah. 60 to 85 90. It's still a 25, 30 year journey. So to answer your question, knowing what to do with yourself is very important and there are no easy answers. It takes a little bit of an effort to figure out what are you truly devoted to, hmm. not just passionate about. So there are a couple of more things here, right? It's not just time. It's also a dip in your social currency, so to speak. When you're working, you are someone. Right. Like we were discussing, what are you if you're not your business card, right? Yes. So does that switch from 
having a business card to being nobody but yourself. Uh, is that hard? Um, you know, I must confess, I thought it won't, I thought it may be 50-50 hard, tough, but my, but when I speak to everyone around me and I tell, when they ask me what do you do, I just simply say I'm jobless and I'm unemployed. And the response I get is, I wish we could be in your shoes most of the time. Now they're being very sweet to me, that's a separate matter, but I realize that there is a certain element of uh, curiosity in being financially free. Mm. And a lot of people want to attain that uh, th that status because finally that's the new way of looking at life mm. so again coming back to your question I think Sonia we've gone through that transition of people being very skeptical about leaving early to this generation which wants to be free and I think financial freedom is the new status symbol and what is the best piece of investment advice that you have ever got best piece of I, I'm telling you, I'm so fortunate to have been part of the mutual fund industry. That training that I got, my early days were at Templeton, and like they, they really, you know, teach you um, managing money and they ingrain it into you. And the best uh, training I got was that this is about decades. And so every time, whether the markets are up or down, I always take a 10 year view. Mm. For, for, just think about this the average age of an Indian is 26. Mm. We are the youngest country on this planet. Then how can long term be four years mm. or three years? Intuitively, that's incorrect. For a 26 year old, how can long term be four years? Long term should be at least 20 years. Yeah. So medium term should be 10 and short term should be five. When you look at it from that prism, the best advice I ever got was just stay put and ride the journey because India is a country of wealth creators if we don't make silly mistakes as investors. So just don't misbehave with the money. Okay, so just stay put, take low risk, stay invested. And uh, ride the and, journey. And ride the journey, got that. So you said that 70% of your money is in equities, 30% in fixed mm. income. Yes. Have you in your two decadal journey of investing ever looked at other things like say, trading, FNO, cryptocurrencies, uh, short term, you know, penny stocks. I'm asking because yeah. a lot of people get carried away, try to make a quick buck here and there. Your advice? Uh, and I'm being very respectful about all of these instruments because uh, some of them I don't understand. For example, I've really tried to understand crypto. I could not. So the test that I use for investments is that if I want to invest or suggest an investment, it should pass one test, which is a 16 year old or an 80 year old, both spectrums of the population should be able to understand it at one time. So it should not be so complicated that they don't understand it. And none of these really pass that test. And so I've stayed away from crypto derivatives, futures and options, penny stocks, because I, A, I couldn't understand them myself, and B, I think I kind of got married to the 10 year story. Okay. Um, so. Uh, so they do make money. Obviously, they do make money. Uh, but for that reason, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, a bit uh, risk averse. I, I, I mean, taking sane uh, decisions, right? Actually, taking so conservative decisions, so to speak, always works in the longer run, I guess. No, Sonia, look at it. For a person like me who has no source of income but my investments, yeah. I'm 70% invested in equities. Mm. That is not technically a conservative investor if you really look at it. Absolutely. Because the markets are down 6%, 7% in a week, which obviously means that my portfolio, your portfolio is down. Yeah. But the point I'm trying to make is that we're not here to maximize the returns. I'm here to ride this out mm. and create wealth and even a 12% compounding, but over 10, 15, 20 years is a serious amount of uh, money. money because inflation long term could be 7%, so that's 5% real return. Okay, finally, before we let you go, would you have done anything differently? And would you advise the younger generation to take early retirement or not? Um, so it's a very personal uh, journey, but I'm beginning, uh, I get a lot of calls nowadays from, from people uh, who are anywhere between 35. I've noticed this, the, the age at which I'm beginning to get calls on advice, mm -hmm is 35 onwards, which basically means that um, the working population now is beginning to at least 
think about this. Mm -hmm. And my advice to everyone is don't let that flame down. Don't kill that flame. Keep that little flame going mm -hmm. because that's the curiosity that you're kind of building for. Mm -hmm. And at some stage, if not today, if not tomorrow, in 10 years time, you'll realize what you are truly driven by. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can kind of say goodbye to the corporate world. Okay, well, uh, financial freedom is a superpower, as we all know, and yes. I'm so glad that you've achieved it. Thanks a lot, Thank you. Thank Karan, you so for much. taking the time out Thank and you. speaking to CNBC TV 18. With that, it is a wrap on another edition of Smart Money. You folks have a great weekend. We'll see you again on Monday.